Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is part two of the compound segmented bowl. Last week I showed you the cutting of the staves, making up of the spaces in between to add a little bit of character, the glue up and the mounting it into a faceplate. And today we're going to take over from this part we're going to be shaping it making a recess to accept the base of the bowl and what follows up from this point on so here's bowl one and also i discussed a little bit the if you were going to be proficient with this type of a bowl making you would set yourself up with several that would be ready for the next stage as well. All of these would be ready to be mounted on a lathe. Now I'm not going to be turning all of these. We're going to focus on this, but the process is the same. So anytime I have glue up time that I need to step away from the turning, I could probably focus on that, remove this from the lathe, put the next one up, and continue but I don't know if I'm going to be doing that limitations on time and basically I just want to show you the procedures I have what I think what I think might be the base for this mounted on here but I'm not sure so and we're not going to worry about that because everything should be custom made So I'll remove this out of the uh, lathe for now, since I got a chuck already mounted on this piece. So I am not able to put up any type of a faceplate, so going to take it easy on the speed. And the first thing that I have to do is make a recess. But the recess has to be in deep enough. So when you put it in, and I'll explain that a little bit later, you're not limited to a small glue joint between the base of this and your base that you're going to be using. Whatever it is, whether if it's a pedestal, whether if it's just a... Uh, a continuance of this, a flat ring, whatever you do, you have to set up as deep as you can on this uh, profile right here to give yourself a good, a good recess. And go in there and start shaping up that mortise that you need to set up. So with this being set, I'm going to remove it, set it aside for a minute, just a minute, and throw up that piece so I can rework this. I want this to be the size of that mouth over there. And I can use my calipers, my dividers, whatever, to take a measurement on this. Take a measurement. End to end. Take a measurement point to point that you're already trued up across from each other. And that's it right there. And you can see I am very close on what I have to remove on this. Very little. I'm barely taking anything off this. The last thing I would want would be to be sloppy in there. And there we go. A perfect fit, no movement, 
got a nice perfect fit on this. So time to glue it up. And the glue up, you don't need a lot of glue, you just need enough. But that's a good amount. That will still give me some gush out. And there's really no orientation on this. It's just a matter of putting it up. Get the tail stock in and pull up some pressure on that. I think you, you know the basics of what needs to be done. Other thing, this wood is extremely hard. So, you know, I know that sometimes I don't show uh, putting on a face shield and stuff like that, but put it on. So I got my favorite gouge over here. This will dull down very quickly with this wood. So let me see how it uh, behaves. Now, I'm almost there. I got these two flat spots over here and these three here. But I'm already kneading up the bottom. I just got a little bit more to shave here. Now one thing to keep in mind is the profile that you give on this is determined by how thick your wood is to start off with. The thicker it is of course the more you can do concave or alcove or uh, outward profile. So you, those are the limitations you have with this type of turning. But I could turn this all the way in, I could make a slight concave here. Uh, there's a little bit of flexibility that can go with this but I am just following up somewhat of an OG on this uh, starting off a nice profile this way and then the top I'll probably round it over once I know what I'm gonna be doing with the very top of the, uh, the piece never rush it never commit to something that will uh, set you up and you can't change your mind that Now I cannot remove or do anything with the front of this while this glue joint is still wet. So at this point what I would do is set up my next piece and leave this one aside maybe till a few hours have uh, passed by. Uh, I know that if I remove this right now I'm asking for trouble. So therefore what I need to do is maybe just do a little bit of sanding here but leave it in between and then leave this alone for a little while because I don't want to be doing multiple pieces right now but like I said you would take this off the lathe set up your next one and do the same thing that I just did here and that way you would be advancing on what you're doing with your lathe 
This wood, if anything else, if nothing else, should give me an ultimate shine because it's extremely, extremely hard. This is gonna look good. So I'll probably end up throwing up this top, reshaping it a little bit, but I shouldn't have to come down to the base of this again other than the very bottom and right now I could literally rotate it but I'm going to need this bottom on here for a long time so I will actually have to separate it from the uh, face plate and do all that now I showed you the glue up <coughs> of the bowl into this face plate and as you saw all I did was put a blob a small blob in the middle of each one of these and the best way to remove this is take like a putty knife and go in there and tap it of course I need to remove pressure from the front which I don't have pressure right now but uh, this might have glued in a little bit more than what I needed it to I might have put a little bit too much glue I'm going to tap it with a hammer, slightly. And it's not just going to open up on you, because all of these are holding up. But you will break off the, the seals. There we go. And I believe the whole faceplate to be separated. I can go ahead and remove it and you will see what damage was done. Absolutely none. None to my faceplate. Just a matter of cleaning it up with sandpaper or my disc sander or back on the lathe and no damage done to the, to the ring itself either. So, based on information from one, from a rep, from uh, Tight Bond, based on his information, he says that people have a tendency to use way too much glue on their projects. That a project with too much glue is more problematic than a prob uh, than one that has just the right amount of glue where you get good coverage, but you don't have bubbling up of the glue anywhere. Now, like I said, this glue is a little bit fresh and knowing me, I'm dying to get in here and uh, start working very lightly. And that's all it takes is very lightly and one little catch and the thing goes flying all over the place. And everything that I did will be lost. So, 
knowing that from experience. Don't ask me how I know that, but basic knowledge, I guess. Um, I'm going to have to leave this one alone for a little while. I am not going to chance losing this piece. Um, would be the star and the quarter inch of the, the thing. And the profile that I have would go into this quite a bit. So um, I need to embed this. So I can't just sit this on the top. It has to be a recess. And this would not work for that particular case. But you know, I got some old ones that I made a long time ago. And let me see what do I got and if they would work. Okay, so I've got the star made up, which will go inset on the base of this. It's going to go in just about an eighth of an inch. So this will be flat from here out to receive the star. And then all of that will be true. Uh, cleaned up and they will be part of the base and I need something else to finish up the top of this now I got a ring a standard ring 12 segments made out of poplar which is the same wood that I'm using on the star so I'm going to wrap up the top of this with this ring I'm not going to show you how to do this because it's all over the place uh, everybody has done segmented rings but again it's nice and flat and the thing that I will do is I will offset it these points to the center of those so I'll take a center point maybe on one of these on the opposite side and I will set it up in a way that it will be set so what I will have to do on this is flatten this part up pretty much pretty much to this outside edge all the way down Put this up, then contour the two of them, and then work the inside of the piece. That will give me a nice wide glue area here. When I do the inside, this bowl is not going to go much thinner than this area right here, so it will be about 3 8 Once I get to the lowest point, maybe a quarter of an inch or so, all the way uh, uh, down screwed up and that should be make for a nice bowl this top I might concave and then come all the way to this outside edge to give it a more of a detail and enclose the top a little bit I will see on that um, uh, I might just do a little rollover I am not sure exactly how I want to attach this one so stick around Okay, so I got this mounted back up and running 400 RPMs or so. I'm going in there and clean up. Just uh, keep the same contour.
So I will test it. That looks in pretty good shape. No way for me to test this though with it being mounted here, so gotta separate it. dry enough and I'm in between centers which is a good way to do stuff I got all the splatter of the glue as you can see running outwards <laughs> a cool effect actually if it was done with paint but anyway I want to true up this top edge and get the ball all to these points Make sure this edge is nice and parallel and it is so anything I lay over here it will be true all the way through and uh, I got just a little flat part still here I can recontour I can go down a little bit more and in this case I think I'm gonna go down a little bit more Perfect. And that's more than enough for me to true up whatever I do over here. Um, <clears throat> I was thinking that maybe I wouldn't do this, but I'm going to do it. Add this extra ring to it anyway and uh, true up the outside to it. Um, it's not going to take much from the bowl whatsoever and it will just give me a break of this uh, going into the different colors. So the next step will be to do this. I'm going to wait a little while. Do this and finalize the inside and reveal the star. Okay, well, this has been here for about... Uh, 45 minutes or so 
So I'm going to do a little bit of rounding off on this and I'm going to do something a little different as well. saying oh that looks pretty good leave it alone but I promised some I promised to incorporate a ring an open segment ring to this even though it's one segment and I hate to do it but I'm gonna do it anyway I'm gonna part it up I didn't get to finish this one. Gotta go in a little bit more. So you bring your headstock in and it keeps your rings intact and it gave me a ring in case I wanted to use it for something else so now it's time to true up this ring a little bit it should be fairly true but just want to clean it up a little bit and make sure that it is true Check it. Make sure you're nice and square, and I am. No gap between front and back. So, for those of you who've been curious as to how you go about using that open segment ring. Now, I really didn't want to use this because, uh, like I said, it's 20 segments and my whole bowl is done out of 12. Uh, so, but I'm going to use it up anyway. And what you do 
is you apply a little bit of glue in this case I don't have to worry too much about it but if you were doing uh, other ones you would use a, sm a bottle with a small mouth and you would just do an, uh, a little edge so you don't get glue all over the place but on these I wanted them to stick solid so I'm not worried about that and apply a little bit of glue to each one now this will definitely need to dry up I cannot cheat this one get a little bit of coverage but don't overdo it and you can clean any glue that's in between with uh, like a pipe clean or something like that and uh, that helps a lot as well I believe this should be good just spreading out the glue a little bit make sure I get it all over probably being a little sloppy with this you know you can f see a lot of videos on the, out there on how this is done probably a better method than what I'm showing you here but basically I wanted these to be locked up Wait, they're not going to fall off on me when I put it up. Bring it up. Bring your life center in. That way, I know I got enough pressure on the sides. Now, this ring, once it glues up, I'll be able to separate it. If I need a little assistance, I might give it a little bit of assistance, but I don't know. It all depends. Now, some of them hit metal, some of them hit edge. That's the drawback of doing uh, this type of a segment turning uh, when you mix the numbers and there's no way to avoid it when you do that okay so center center of this edge and I can probably get somewhat of an established line center again it's only going to work on a couple of them like that here I'm center center and then these two hit to the edge This would be a good uh, way to use this with weight, an even distributed uh, weight all the way around this. So you could uh, make sure that these pieces are making equal contact. But yeah, that's not bad. I mean, that's not bad considering the, the spacing that I got here. Uh, I actually think that looks pretty good. Well, I'm not quite ready to start turning this out here. The glue is still rather fresh. But I am ready to start shaping up the bottom a little bit. And I might hit the outside of these open segments a little bit. We will see. By the time I get done with this, maybe.
So I just basically want to draw up and clean up a little bit of this. Well, I can tell you one thing, for the amount of work that has to go into one of these bowls, it's no wonder why I don't do many of them. Uh, anytime you add additional things to it, like this open ring, uh, just gives you even more work. So if I, I like the idea of making these is to incorporate these uh, segments with uh, traditional style bowls. So if I take, make a ring like that and just add it to a base of a bowl or to a top of a bowl, then uh, you know, you can uh, get the best of both worlds. But to go ahead and do these over any type of a production for this that's not me I don't have the patience that's required for this type of bowl and I appreciate them when other people do them but not not for me um, I lost the star I uh, was sending away and uh, you know I knew that I only had a small profile on uh, the depths but I was not happy because I had a little void which was uh, number one uh, that kind of turned me off a little bit and then I tried filling it up with CA which is you know it's a, it's a makeshift uh, deal and uh, you know that probably would have filled it up but when I went back in there with a gouge to clean up the CA well I didn't even realize it I had taken out completely the star the star was going to be a key thing on this, and it's gone. It was going to be a surprise type thing. So it's time to just finish off the bottom, and I have the finished vase. So seeing that I got a donut ring over here, I will use this. 
Now this is not going to lock it up. It will center it though and keep it a little bit more solid than the front on the back end so it doesn't wiggle on me. And it's a matter of still going to get to the center again. size it's 10 inches in diameter 5 inches tall I incorporated the open segment piece just to show on how you uh, do that part of one ring so I would get uh, sandwich it in in between I got the maple and the ipe ipe is the dark wood with maple staves maple base and maple top rank so here it is the uh, Ipe takes an amazing shine um, didn't spend much time to uh, on it where I could have done a little bit more but it's uh, it's really tough uh, it's tough on the cut um, tough on your tools and this, the time that I took to do this, it's not that it's extreme. It was the in-betweens that takes a long time. You know, putting these together, then going to the base, then... So, it's a lengthy process. But like I said, if we were, if you utilize your time and go and once you get initially set up to do these and you make multiples, like I, I got behind me, which I'm not going to be turning until I feel I'm in the mood for it. I might incorporate those with a regular ball. Uh, but uh, uh, this is not for me because I like coming out here, getting on the lathe, getting it done, and it's done and over with. Um, I love this stuff. I, I really do. Uh, I like the results, I like the way it does, I like seeing other people doing it, but I, myself, for me, I don't have, it's not the skill, uh, so, you know, I mean, yeah, I, I would still have a long ways to go to really master this, but um, I have the very, uh, a good understanding of the basics, but it's the amount of time that's required. So as I was saying, uh, you know, this is definitely not for me. Uh, I, once I lost the star in the middle, which I really wanted in there, that uh, really was a bummer. Uh, I really wanted that to be part of the highlight and uh, it's gone. Uh, but either way, you know, the wood has a nice grain uh, to it and uh, it's still a nice looking bowl. It would have been an added bonus, maybe next one, some day down the road I will focus and if you guys want to know how to make those uh, a little bit more in detail let me know and uh, I can shoot a video on how to do uh, multiple designs and patterns and uh, assembly of them right well thanks for watching please subscribe ah. thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed please subscribe Please like and link it to your friends. Thanks. See you soon.